Welcome my peace, my people. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'll be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart, my peace, my peoples. So let's talk about the shy season one, episode three, Ghost. You know, Brandon is chilling in a van with his boy Lewis. Lewis is smoking weed, getting high. Brandon got five hundred dollars on him. He's about to buy a he's about to buy a burner. He's about to get a gun. He's about to buy some shit that he don't need. Some shit that he can't do nothing with. So, anyways. So Brandon's boy, Lewis, was like, yo, you know, how much you want to spend? He was like, whatever you don't want to spend, how much, whatever you don't want to spend, put the rest in your sock and hide. And it's like, damn, you got to tell Brandon that? So Brandon ain't really a street dude. He ain't really a street kid. Like, he doesn't even comprehend that, hey, I'm not going to show him all my money. And plus, Brandon's probably never brought a gun before. And you can understand why he's with Jerrica because, you know, she's different. You know, she comes from a background of her family is wealthy, real estate, you know, people. So that's why he probably end up clicking with her. He works. He wants to be a chef. He wants to have his own business. The street shit ain't for him. That's not his business. That's not what he want to do. So, you know, he ends up, you know, getting scared because the guy that's selling him the gun starts to talk about oh this gonna blow a hole in you i got hollow tips you can if you can see right through the mother sucker you can get this clip but it's gonna cost you 350 brandon has the 300 dollars in his hand he's shaking he's nervous and then he was like i don't want it and then the dude hit him in the head with a gun pistol hit him and then took his 300 dollars and bounced now brandon gotta go home <laughs> And um, he don't want to go straight home. So he goes to his house, you know what I mean? And get washed up. And his mom's boyfriend, you know, Laverne's boyfriend helps him get, you know, get together. He put on Coogie's shirt. He washes up a little bit and he goes home. And it's not, it's not a good thing. <laughs> but it seems like Brandon and um, his mom's boyfriend might end up developing a relationship or something's going to happen between them that's probably going to be positive and so you know um Laverne's boyfriend was like oh I know why you don't want to go home like this because you don't want to get in trouble that's why you came over here because your girl gonna get you and yes Jerrica is gonna get him because it seemed like Jerrica is trying to keep him on a straight and narrow path and making sure that you know he goes like where he needs to go like she's also she's his girlfriend his lover and kind of his mother and his mentor as well and plus she had a different life than him she's showing him different things so <laughs> I was like, damn. And so we get, you know, Ronnie. Ronnie's in the house. He's all smoking the weed or whatever. And he's thinking about Coogie sitting right on the couch next to him. Was like, you did leave one body. You left a witness. You left somebody there. Somebody there. You left a witness, which is Kevin. And also saying to him, you shot me for no reason, man. He was like, why you have on the chain? That's what I was saying. Coogie, why you have on the chain? Like, so now we know Brandon and Coogie ain't street people like that. Because we also know they grew up in a house. So they have a house because the mom Laverne wants to sell the house and their grandfather brought them that house so once upon a time that was a good neighborhood but you know they're not like street kids and something happened to Laverne where she drinks a lot and so anyways moving on from that yeah because why would Krugie if he was really a street kid like that even though he you know he's a hustler like basically if he see an opportunity whatever type of opportunity is he's going to take advantage of it but you know he's not really a street kid because he would have never had the gold chain on his neck he would have got rid of the gold chain just like he got rid of the sneakers and you know Ronnie's like why did you have on that chain so it's like damn so anyways moving on from that we get Emmett Emmett's trying to make a nut trying to make a baby with Keisha he wants to go raw with his nasty ass he's always trying to get in some <laughs> getting Keisha raw he already got enough kids he got kids he can't even take care of and he wanted to abandon his son last episode now he's trying to go raw up inside Keisha like come on miss me with that so Brandon finally goes home he first he lies to Jericho about you know um the bruise on his head and then he just ended up saying that because he didn't have she was like so how did you get hurt what happened and he couldn't come up with a lie quick enough or maybe he didn't want to lie to her either he tells her what really went down that he tried to buy a gun or whatever and so she gets upset with him she's not coddling him she's not hugging him she's not kissing him she's not being understanding she was like come on you don't be stupid go to the cops or whatever because you know Brandon lets Jerrica know that he knows who killed you know um his brother so 
Anyway, so it's like, damn. I was like, damn, she ain't even got hug him. She ain't gonna say I understand. She ain't gonna say shit. She just pissed at him. She was like, you better grow up. Like, dude, you can't, what, you gonna go to jail? What, you gonna throw your life away? You know what I'm saying? But that is his brother. His brother was a kid. He got killed, murdered for no reason. And the killer's still walking around. And then Brandon knows who the killer is. So that's a hard pill to swallow for Brandon. But she ain't trying to hear that. So I guess he needs a stern, tough woman. And so I was like, damn. So, um, you know, we get to Kevin's house, you know, Kevin and Keisha, they seem like they have a good environment. You know, the mom's there, they're eating breakfast, they're doing their homework, you know, but Kevin don't seem like he's all like, he's like in a happy place because first of all, he don't want to do the play. Second of all, he know he got Ronnie chasing him. Third, he know he got the big girl. I don't know her name. Adria, Adria, um, the girl he likes cousin, so he's not really trying to hear that, you know what I mean? So he's really having a bad day, and so he swears he got to put money in the swear jar. Them even putting money in the swear jar lets you know that, you know, they have, like, a good upbringing, uh, a family bond, and even his sister, I think she's a, a, a male woman or whatever, she swears, and she got to put money in the jar, so as, you know, um, so then from there, we get, you know, Tracy and Ronnie. Ronnie's been tracing down Tracy, trying to get in contact with her and all this other stuff. He calls her at work. Tracy comes down from her job and she's yelling and she's screaming at Ronnie. Don't call me. Don't come around here. You, you, you have, you stood me up. I was waiting around for you because, you know, Ronnie sold the gun that had the body on it, on it to Jason. And now we know that Jason knows that gun had a body on it. Like, damn, news travel fast around here in this neighborhood. <laughs> so... Then, you know, um, Ronnie's just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? He's like, I'm sorry. You know, something came up or whatever. And she was like, you used to always do that to me. I used to always be waiting up for you. So now we know, you know, Ronnie had his demons. I think Ronnie was in the military or something because it looked like he had a uniform on when his grandmother was holding this picture. And, you know, he probably suffers from PTSD and he was drinking a lot. He probably seen some things. So that's probably one of the reasons why him and Tracy separated. Plus, he ain't got no money. Tracy likes money because you see Tracy's about her business. And so she was like, I'm done with you. I'm done with you or whatever. So we'll see what happens with that situation. As she's walking away, Ronnie was like, yo, I'm going to find out why this happened to Jason. I'm going to find out why it happened to Jason. And, um... And basically, he's trying to say anything to get back into her good graces by bringing up Jason. But he probably does want to know what happened. We'll see. So we get, you know, um, Q, you know, the the older dude, he pulls up uh, Reg and Trace, basically, to see what was going on. They, they're in that G-Wagon. That's the same G-Wagon that, you know, Drake, um, Jake was watching and got $100 for. So... You know, Trace, that's his block, that's his hood. He got his dope houses, his stash houses. And Reg is like the second in command or whatever. So Q goes up there to see what's up, to see what's good. And um, he ends up talking to Trace because Trace is in the car. He was like, yo, everybody know what's going on. Just put a put a billboard out here that you guys are selling drugs and you're making money. So basically they have a, they're, they're talking about business is good, you know. And then Trace was like, yo, you you bounced, you went away. You know what I mean? Why, why are you back in? How long are you here to stay? He goes, I don't know. I'll be here for a minute. I'll be here as long as, as, long as I need to be here. And he was like, yo, so what's going on with these murders about these kids? Yo, you, you know any information about that, that kid that got shot over here near your stash house? Ain't that your stash house over there? And he was like, no, nah, I don't know nothing about that. Why are you over here questioning me? He was like, yo, I just want to know or whatever. And um, and he was like, oh, it seems. And, you know, um, Q was like, it seems like business is good. He was like, yeah, business is good. And so, um, you know, Q was like, keep it tight or whatever. And so then that's when Trace was like, you taught me. You taught me well, or whatever. So I don't know if Q used to, you know, run the streets. He used to run the block. And he turned over the block to, you know, Trace. Or he used to be a mentor, maybe in the Black Panthers. Maybe he was a big wig in a neighborhood where he taught discipline. Because it seems like Q was very disciplined. But he did just come back from Cuba. So he knows, you know, Trice. But he doesn't know Reg because Reg gave him a hard time when he walked up to the G-Wagon. 
And so, um, he was like, <laughs> so Q was like, yeah, I just, I just need to know, could you find us some information? Let me know what happened to that kid that was shot. You know, the basketball player, the star, which he's talking about Jason or whatever. So we'll see. So from that instant, you know, um, Q being gone and coming back or whatever. And he comes back and he's asking questions about Jason because, you know, Q went to go ask Martinez about Jason. He also asked Mart. He also tells Martinez that he knows Tracy, which is his mother. So I'm thinking that, you know, Jason is actually Q's son. That's why he's so invested and, you know, finding out who killed his son. So I think Jason, the basketball player star, is actually, you know, Q's son. And that's why he's back to seek revenge or put somebody in jail. I don't know. So we get to, you know, Emmett. Emmett needs to get a job. He needs to make more money because he got the baby living at his house. So he goes to his job and they get into that nasty ass kitchen. You got the cook over there recycling the oil. Talking about this oil is good for another week. The, the oil got flavor and he doesn't end up tasting the damn oil. That shit is disgusting. Like, yo, come on. Like, there's better ways to sift oil. He put it over a coffee can with, like, I think one of them hospital bat, um, um, bad um, things. I forgot what they call them. I was like, oh, my God. And, like, there's better ways to drain to try to clean the oil. Oh, my God. That was so disgusting. He's talking about he put it in the refrigerator and let it sit and use it. That is so, that's just, oh, like, damn, that's why people don't like to eat out, man. For real, for real. And so, you know, he tells, you know. Emmett that he needs to give that hundred dollars back to Q. Don't play with Q. He ain't he ain't a man to be played with. Make sure you give him back his money. You think Q was gonna take the money back? Because we know Q don't need that money because he got a lawyer. He just brought a he just brought or put a mortgage on a little condo. I mean like a house over there in the hood. So we'll see what happens with that situation. And so we got Ronnie. Ronnie goes to see Detective, you know, Cruz to ask him, like, yo, where's my son's cell phone? Can't find it. He got his stuff sent over. And we didn't get any of that, you know, information. We didn't get his cell phone. And, you know, his mom wants the pictures or whatever. So Cruz is like, yo, get out of here or whatever. Like, what are you talking about? I don't know. And so then, you know, um, Cruz is trying to walk away. And um, Ronnie grabs him. He's like, get the F off for of me. Or whatever and it's just like damn and he's yelling he was like go he was like i can't get any question he was like i don't supposed to even be on the case yo but forget about it man be quiet just go away but we see the other detective wallace the one that's in charge actually watching you know um detective cruz you know watching him talk to ronnie and whatever and then you know um Cruz is scared because Cruz know because Cruz kind of feels like you know Ronnie killed you know Coogie and you know that's the problem plus he feels like he ate it and abetted in that situation by letting Ronnie know that you know um they had a suspect or whatever so he knows that Detective Wallace is going to be asking him questions and so it's it's crazy and so then we get Kevin. Kevin's trying to go to school, whatever. And guess what? The big girl she, that got a crush on him and Kevin likes her cousin. She done threw him up against the wall and kissed him, tried to tongue kiss him. I was like, yo, that couldn't be my kid. I would be so upset. Like, imagine your kid getting harassed like that. Like, yo. And she's like bullying him for some kiss. Talking about he's sweet. He was like, I ain't sweet. I'm gangster. And she threw him up against the wall. She kissed him. He started running. I was like, oh, no, that is horrible. I guess they letting us know that boys get harassed too at a young age by their classmates as well. And so, um, you know, Brandon goes home. Brandon's talking to Jerrica, letting her know that the mom is about to sell the house and he doesn't want her to sell the house because he has shares in it, blah, 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 and all that other good stuff. And so Jerrica, she goes over there and, you know, um, Laverne and her boyfriend are so disrespectful. You know, um, Laverne's boyfriend says she's so she's bougie like turkey bacon. I was like, yo, why you got to say that? Shit was funny, though. And they were, and then the mom says something. She's like a jack in a box or something like that. And um, Jerrica's talking. Then Ronnie jumps in and then Brandon jumps in the talk. And she was like, bad enough. I got to listen to her. I can't listen to both of you at the same time. I was like, yo, Brandon was like, you guys are disrespectful as fuck. They are so disrespectful. <laughs> Jerrica's like, I'm just going to keep it, 
you know, 100. I'm just going to be professional. She was like, yo, this property is worth something because of, you know, the Obama library and all this other stuff that's going to be built in the neighborhood. So your property value is going to go up and you can probably sell for a lot. And Brandon is mad at her because she gave his mother the, the true information about how much the property is worth. And, you know, Brandon is upset with her. She was like, yo, don't put me in the bullshit with you and your mom because you guys are dysfunctional. You guys got problems going on and all, and all that other stuff. And, you know, and she was like, you know, because they're going back and forth arguing like it's back and forth with control, this and that, putting each other down. She was like, don't put me in the middle of that shit, yo. And so I was like, damn, so that house is worth some money. And so then we have Ronnie. Ronnie goes to see Jason, the guy that he sold the gun with the dirty body on it, the, the, the gun with the body on it from Coogie or whatever. Basically, he goes to talk to him to see if he can find out any information about, you know, um, find out any information about, you know, Jason and all this other stuff. And so he was like, so Ronnie was like, yo, you be in the hood, you be over there, you be on twice is block and stuff you be this you be there blah ain't a third and you know he was like yeah i be there whatever but what do i look like you know i ain't the popos and he was like just because i go you you, know, you think when i go to a whole house i i eat pussy in a whole house i know better than that i was like yo <laughs> he said you think he goes you think i <laughs> he says this <laughs> You don't you don't you think I know better than to eat pussy in a whorehouse? I was like, no. And so basically I agreed to make a deal. And so Ronnie was like, yo, I'm not I don't gotta suck your dick or nothing. And he was like, nah, man, I got other people to do that. And so they shake hands and then, you know, Jason brings him down to, you know, to his to his knees because, you know, um, what's his name? Jason was sitting down, so he brings Ronnie down to his knees and was like, yo, you better, you better make sure you brought me that gun with that body on it. And, you know, the people that told him, it got to be the people that Ronnie be smoking and drinking in front of his house with the two guys, Curtis and the other dude, because they knew he had the gun. They knew and they told him to go sell it to Jason or whatever. So anyways, um, they, he, so Jason was like, yo, the cops come over here looking and sniff, sniffing and asking questions. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill your family, kill your girlfriend, your grandmother and your prom date. So if there's any loose ends, you better go tie them up. You better get it straight. And so that puts the fear and the fear kind of and, you know, Ronnie, because he knows he has a witness and the witness is, you know, Kevin. And then on top of that, um, he knows he knows the witnesses. He knows that Kevin is a witness. And then on top of that, he know about, you know, Cruz. It, Cruz and told him that, you know, he killed the wrong person. So it's just like, damn. And plus, you know, um, Jason said that he's going to go ask around. He's going to ask questions around the block to find out, you know, how Jason got killed, who Jason, who killed Jason or what was he involved with or whatever, basically. So, but so I'm like, damn. so Jason actually going to be running around back and forth. So we'll find out what Jason wants Ronnie to do. So anyways, we get, you know, but you know, when Ronnie was leaving um, Jason's house, you see all them windows hanging out. Why are the windows hanging out like that? Why is that metal stuff all over the place? Like what the hell? And you know, the inside of the house looks all right. Why he got windows just everywhere? Is that some type of architect? What? Like, is that, is that like dope fiend art? I don't know. So anyways, moving on from that, we have, um, um, we have Ronnie asking questions. Ronnie, Ronnie's accent, you know, wants, you know, accent. What happens is, you know, Kevin, basically Kevin and every Kevin, Jake and Papa, they're at school, whatever. They're chilling, minding their business. But first, before then, Ronnie goes to the store and he's asking questions to the store guy about, you know, you know, them three boys, Kevin, Jake and Papa, whatever. But he describes them. He was like, oh, yeah, they go to school up the street. Yeah, I want to give them some of my son's stuff or whatever. So then Ronnie goes up to the school. Kevin sees, you know, Ronnie and, and he he lets Jake and Papa know. And they start running. They start running. And Ronnie started chasing them. Like, when do they allow strangers on school grounds since, you know, the school shooting in, in Connecticut or whatever? 
So I'm just like, damn, with these school shootings, you can just run up on the schools like this. But I guess you can do that in the hood, right? So anyways, they run into the auditorium. They have to try on clown outfits. And then so they got to try on um, clown outfits and all this other stuff. And um, what's his name? Jake said we look like some gay ass circus clowns. I was like, you guys are just way too much. And so we get Detective Cruz and Detective Wallace. They start talking. And so Detective Wallace is asking Cruz questions about, yo, who's that guy or whatever um, is Ronnie. And so we find out that Ronnie is a CI. So that's how Ronnie knows Detective Cruz is because he used to, he's, he was a CI. So Ronnie, if Ronnie's be out here snitching. So then, you know, um, so that's when Wallace was like, yo, isn't that, you brought him down there to see the dead body of Jason. That's his father. He was like, no, that's not his father. You know, there's somebody else is his father, whatever, Blasian the third. And he was like, did you let him know that you had, you know, Kugi and the other room questioning him? He was like, nah, I didn't tell him. So Ronnie, so Cruz is trying to cover his back or whatever, because he doesn't know for sure, but he knows he's in deep. He's in too deep with this bullshit. And he just lied to, you know, um, Detective Wallace and then Wallace you know he tells Detective Wallace that no he just came to ask me about his son's cell phone because the mom wants some pictures so Detective Wallace hit the street harassed a home with a homeless person squeezed his arm backwards or whatever and was like yo I need this cell phone from the dead body or whatever the find it for me or whatever so I'm like damn right under the bridge and so Wallace is on the case because he thinks there's something fishy with Cruz. And he don't, it seems like he don't really like Cruz that much, but he wants Cruz to play on his softball team. So then um, I was just like, damn, Ronnie, you a CI? You be out here snitching? So now we know how they have a relationship. And so then, you know, Ronnie goes up to school. He's chasing the kids, but he can't find them. And so then, you know, Jake tells... Jake tells Kevin that, yo, you need to go talk to that dude and tell him that, yo, you ain't gonna snitch, you ain't a problem, because he don't know that you're not a problem unless you tell him you're not a problem, so you gotta have to do a man-to-man or whatever, so this kid Kevin is in so much shit, so Kevin is gonna go meet up with Ronnie, he's convinced to go do it, that's, I guess that's the best thing he can do, and so um, Brandon's at home with his mom or whatever, and he's packing up Coogie stuff or whatever, and um, he talks to his mom. Uh, he talks to his mom, and he and she t- says to him like, "The reason why I want to sell the house is because every time I go by Coogie's room, like he like it, re- it reminds me of this. It reminds me of that. I, I think about him being in there. It just haunts me. I can't live here anymore. Blas in the third. I miss him. And then he and then she says to Brandon like, "I know you always thought I love." you know, Kogi more than you, but I didn't. He just needed me more because you was all right to go out there and survive and be okay. But he just needed a little more help, a little more attention. And so they cry and they hug. So it's good to see like Laverne is not actually, you know, blaming Brandon for his death anymore. And so we get to meet, you know, Brandon's cousin, Hannibus, <laughs> Hannibal or something like that. We get to meet his cousin and but before then we got Emmett. Emmett goes into the corner store with the Arabics and um basically he's trying to get a job in there trying to boycott too as well because they didn't want to hire him because somebody threw something at them knocked the nachos on the floor and <laughs> And so they was like, no, we're not hiring you. And Brandon was like, yo, you will want to hire me. I know everybody that steals up in here. Like, this is why people disrespect you guys, because you need to hire somebody from the community. They used to do that a long time ago, but today they won't hire nobody from the community. And these little um, corner stores and gas stations and shit like that. So, you know, um, I'm just like, damn. So then, you know, the son says, hey, listen, I'm going to hook you up. I'm going to hook you up. You know, just bring me these Jord- these these rare Jordans or whatever, and I'm going to get you a job. But then also, Emma gets stopped by the drug dealers and shit, and he's thinking about debating whether to sell drugs because he's talking to Reggie. And Reggie was like, yo, you can make $1,000, you can make this, but there's a part of Emmett that don't want to do it. And so Emmett was like, yo, I got to think about it. And so Reggie said, if you got to think about it, then it ain't for you. Thank God. Hopefully they don't harass Emmett to sell drugs or whatever. But what does Apple mean when... when a- Arabic people call you Apple. I should have looked that up before I did the video. I'm like, yo, what does that mean? So, 
because I haven't heard them call me Apple. I haven't heard that that one before. So, anyways, you know, Jericho, she goes, meets up with Q. Q is buying the house because he wants to watch what's going on in the community. He wants to watch the stats, houses of, you know, Reg and Twice. And basically, he, he is preparing to stalk. And he's, like, basically on a mission. Like, he is, you know, paying close attention to them or whatever. And he's watching the house and he's there. They don't even know that he's watching the spine. He's on a stakeout. So that leads me to believe that, you know, was, you know, Q in some type of military? Was he in the army? Was he in the police? Was he a detective? You know, was he in the Black Panthers? What was he? Because he knows what he's doing. He got his radio, his cigar, his hat. He ain't buy no curtains. He brought the house. He used his lawyer. And that's it. He got that house. Like, that's what I'm talking about. When you got money, you don't got to deal with motherfuckers when you're trying to look for a place to stay or whatever. Like, yo, just just talk to my lawyer. That's it. And so, anyways, you know, Brandon's getting rid of, you know, his clothes. We learned that his cousin, Han Hannibus, Hannibal, you know, put, bust a firecrack in his ear when he was six years old or whatever. So, he has bad hearing. I don't know if that's still true to today, but that might be something that's going to be in the future that might affect Brandon on the show where he can't hear the enemy coming. And so then we got Kev. Kev goes over there to go see, you know, um, Kev goes over there to go see, you know, Brandon. And Brandon was like, oh, how do you know where I live at? Whatever. And he was like, oh, stake him up. Somebody told me whatever. So Brandon couldn't even pick up on it that this little kid is setting him up or whatever. He's from Chicago. He don't know. And so he was just like, you know, um, did you tell anybody what I told you about what happened? I think he was like, nah, I didn't. He was like, yo, I'm sorry, man. Forget everything that I said about that or whatever. Because, you know, Kevin wanted, you know, Brandon to kill Ronnie. I so I was like, shit. And so I'm like, Kevin, but Kevin seemed like he was up to something. And, you know, Kevin just went to go see Ronnie because Ronnie was sitting outside his house and Kevin went across the street to talk to him or whatever. And then next thing you know, we see Kevin over there at Brandon's house. And Brandon was just like, yo, how do you know I live? I'm like, damn, Brandon, you didn't put two to two together that you might be getting set up. Like, how come you didn't use the van? You should have put, you know, Kevin in that van and took him home. But anyways, it was going to happen. So they're walking home. So, you know, Kevin was like, yo, I'm kind of scared to go home by myself. Could you walk me through the park or whatever? So he walks him through the park and guess who showed up? None other than Ronnie. Ronnie's like, I heard you was looking for me. Ronnie's a dirty motherfucker. <laughs> but he's trying to protect his neck because, you know, Jason, he gave Jason that gun that got a body on it. And then we got Cruz. Cruz tells his wife the whole detail. She was like, he, he, Cruz tells his wife like, yo, listen, I think my CI end up killing you know, Coogie, this little kid, because, you know, Detective Cruz is up all night, and his wife was like, come on, put it away, it's another kid, so you can see Detective Cruz, you know, really focus on his cases, he loves his, his cases, he wants them solved, and so he lets his wife know that, hey, listen, my, I think my CI killed somebody I was questioning, and it wasn't even the right person, the wife is like, yo, why don't you turn him in, he was like, I don't know, I know he did it, but I don't know who he did, I can't prove it, so now, Ronnie got a lot of people on his back, and Cruz got people on his back. Kevin got people on his back. Brandon's, a, Brandon's being set up. Kevin, Brandon, Cruz, and um, Cruz and Ronnie, they got a lot of going on. They got a lot of drama going on back around with this case. And then you have, you know, Q. Q trying to find out who killed Jason because that's his son. Peace, I'm out, one love.